break a record. This is Tall and Tangent 21 Sav. It is T minus two minutes to show time and Big Hog is nowhere in sight. Copy that, Tall and Tan. Low side in. Rescue mission for Big Hog is a go. Over and back. Copy that, 21 Sav. Both side and dad are about to gather up the boys. Let's go. How are you doing, John? I'm doing pretty good. The best mission to take off is the bell. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Good afternoon, Lions. I'm John Turner out here. And I'm Brett with your Friday News Forecast. Seniors, if you are interested in attending Grand Valley State University next year, there will be a visit next Tuesday, the 22nd at 9.30 a.m. If you are interested, please stop by Student Services and sign up. Hey, John. Have you heard about the next Spirit Day for our wonderful SL students? No, I haven't heard of anything yet. What's happening? Well, John, let me tell you what's going on. On Tuesday, there's going to be a blue out for the cause of type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is diagnosed in mostly children and young adults. Only 5% of people diagnosed with this condition have this form. In type 1 diabetes, the body does not produce insulin. The body breaks down the sugars and starches you eat into a simple sugar called glucose, which it uses for energy. Insulin is a hormone that the body needs to get glucose from the bloodstream into the cells of the body. NHS thought it would be a good idea to help bring awareness to type 1 diabetes. Join NHS and please wear blue next week on Tuesday. So, Brett, I've been hearing that the hockey team played a pretty great game on Wednesday. Yes, it was a great game, John. Well, I think we should take it over to CJ for some more details on the game. Thanks, guys. The South Line Unified Varsity Hockey Team had their first game at Kensington Valley Ice House on Wednesday and came out with an easy win over St. John's Witt with a score of 10-1. to Shout out to Garraway, Brett Cook, Mitch Hickson, Jake Heffernan, <laughs> with one goal, and Nick Allerton, Matt England, and Grant Gardner with two goals each. The game ended with the mercy rule. Great job, boys. Well, that's all I have for sports today. Let's take it back to the anchors. Thanks, CJ. Students reminder that Thanksgiving break is Wednesday, November 23rd to Friday, November 25th next week. Regarding SLHS's new culture initiative, here is a video brought to you by the Harbor in connection with the SLHS Renaissance program. My name is Scott Bakovich, and I'm a professional speaker. And whether I'm talking to 800 people, 80 people, 8,000 people, even today, uh, the, thing, the things I want people to walk away with are all the same. Uh, and that's complain less, give more. It absolutely breaks my heart to see just how negative our generation has become. I mean, seriously, just take two minutes and look around at how negative everything is at your school. We complain about the clothes we wear, the car we get to school in, the people we hang out with, the decisions they make. We complain about everything, and we complain because it's easy. It's easier to talk trash about what's wrong in the world than actually get up and do something about it. A few years ago, I was driving with my girlfriend, Megan, to her parents' house just to spend some time with her family, and we passed by this park. We'd passed by this park every single time we visited her family, and my girlfriend told us we had to pull over. She wanted to show me something. We pull the car over, and we walk into this park, and I see that there are hundreds and hundreds of people just all congregating in this one spot. And as Megan tells me, this park is where basically the county uh, would ship people via buses, all the homeless people in the entire county, they would ship in one bus to this one park. That way, everyone in the area, churches, groups, all knew where to feed these people, all knew where to give to these people. And she pulled our car over and she said, Scott, um, I have an idea. Why don't you and I live here for a week? And I remember just sitting there thinking like, why would we, why would we live in this place? They're all here, we can feed them as much. And she said, Scott, I wanna do something different. See, in our minds, anybody can go and give out food. Anybody with a wallet can go out and give to these people. But in her mind, she wanted to give something different. 
It's one thing to give from your wallet, but it's another to give from your heart. She wanted us to go to that park and to help with anything we had, to sit and talk to people, to give them things like courage and hope and understanding and compassion, things that aren't easily given out, uh, again, with money. And it was incredible to sit back and look at that week because in seven days, we permanently removed two people from that park. And I say permanently because those people are no longer homeless. They have jobs. They have places where they can live. And the crazy thing is it didn't cost us a dime. See, the greatest things you can give in life don't cost any money. The greatest things you can give in life cost courage. It costs courage to go out and give friendship to somebody at your school who feels invisible. It costs courage to go out and give understanding to somebody who's never heard. It costs courage to go out and do something after you see this video that the people sitting around you right now are gonna to be too afraid to do. See, the truth is when you give people what you have, in reality, you give people hope. When you give what you have, you give people hope. Nobody at the end of their life uh, sits on their deathbed and says, oh, I wish I didn't give that much. Or I wish I didn't give to those people. No person ever becomes truly poor by giving too much. But again, when you give what you have, you give people hope. So the question for you is this, what do you have to give people? If you really wanna go out and actually give something, truly do something that matters, it all starts with just asking yourself a few simple questions. Questions like, what if we stopped caring so much about what people think of us and started caring more about what those people need from us? Like, what if we stopped caring so much about the ratio of followers we have on Twitter and started caring more about the ratio of people who follow our example? I mean, what if we stopped caring so much about a reputation we have for four years and start caring more about the legacy we'll leave for 100? And honestly, like, most importantly, is what's stopping us? What's stopping you? Are you interested in advocating for change and leaving behind a successful legacy? The SLHS Renaissance team is looking for students and staff who are interested in making a difference and having a voice in our school community. The focus of this group will be finding ways to improve the culture and climate of South Lyon High School. If you are interested in being a part of this group, the first meeting will be on November 30th, the Wednesday after break. All students are invited to attend. If you have any questions or need additional information, contact Mr. Brennan. It's starting to get colder here in SL, so let's take it over to Lauren to see what she has for us about the weather for the next couple of days. Hey Southline, it's Lauren with your weather. Today's forecast is partly sunny with a high of 68 and a low of 40 degrees. Now let's take a look at the five day forecast. As you can see, over the weekend, the temperature is supposed to drop to around 30 degrees, so make sure to get out your winter clothes. I have a joke for you today. How do you keep yourself from getting cold feet? Don't go around barefooted. That's all I have for you today, South Lion. Let's take it back to the anchors. Thanks, Lauren. The end of the second marking period is coming up quickly. Make sure to turn in any late work or make up tests if you need to do so. The end of the marking period is on December 2nd. Thank you to everyone for your effort with the Thanksgiving food drive. 1,050 items were donated, including 890 pounds of food. In case you were wondering, that's about four carloads. And now, the moment everyone has been waiting for, the winning classes. In third place with 110 items, Miss Tinknell. In second place with 177 items, Mr. Richstitch. And with the most items of 215, Miss Colley, first place. Thank you to everybody who donated for a good cause. Well, our time with you today is going to come to a close. Wait, John, I think we have another fun Friday video for SL today. Let's Our take a look. All right, well, I think we should take a look then. Good evening, mateys. Welcome to the annual parkour games. I'm your host, Ozzy Oswald Outback, with my beautiful host, Kangaroo Cats. Good day, mateys. Now let's take a look at those beautiful competitors we have today. These are our lovely competitors. First off, the late but great Dinajo Uno, hailing from Tokyo, Japan. Woo! Second, Sergey Sergey, hailing from California. And last but not least, Vladimir Sorcelin, hailing all the way from Mother Russia. Woo! First up, the athlete and inventor of the sauce bottle, Vladimir Sorcelin. Let's see what he can do. Oh, and a beautiful... Up next, we have Sergei Sergei. Let's see what he's got. And here's the mount. <gasps> oh! oh! Last but not least, the Nigel Uno. Let's see if we can take spot number one. Oh! oh! 
So, Dinaj, how do you feel about that first round? Not gonna lie, pretty winded. But my main man, Sergei, he's a great competitor. And Vladimir, he sucks. Not worried about it. So, round one was very interesting, but things are just one went up. Let's take it inside for round two. Right, now we're inside, taking it to round two, where we have a specialized obstacle course. First up is Sergey. Sergey, let's see what he's got. We'll see what happens next Monday.